Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix Online Meeting 287. It's September. It's fall here. I know spring for those of you in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, I don't know that we have any people hanging out with us in the Southern Hemisphere right here in chat. But for those of you that are here, welcome. Thank you. Uh, this meeting is recorded for the rest of you that are not with us right here, right now. Um, if you're here, so go ahead and say hi. Um, we're going to do issue triage today because that's really all that we have going on. I was just talking before the meeting with everybody that... Uh, we're just a little busy right now at Fire Giant and haven't been doing a whole lot of work ourselves in Wix. And so, you know, things are building up and we will uh, we will be getting to all of them. We're just, you know, busy. November is kind of our timeline for a bunch of things. So, yeah, we're a little slower answering a few other things. Anyway, we need to stay on top of triage, uh, keep the issues flowing so people know what's in and what's out. So let's go do that. Bob, you ready? I think so. All right. Woohoo. All right, so it's been a month since we did triage and we only have 10 issues. This is much better than last month when we had, what did we have, 30? I don't know, we had a lot last time. We did. Uh, felt like too many. Um, and the first one is a repeat of 848584, investigate the use of human readable strings to generate upgrade code. I have thought about this a little bit more and I think this is a really cool idea and I think that my the that I was the not idea I was knocking around about using a concept of package ID may work really well here, but I need to write it all down. It needs to be a whip and it needs to be all that kind of stuff. So go ahead and keep give this to me and let's put it in six for now. Um it's not the highest thing because there's a couple of bug fixes I need to get to first, but I would really like to try to do this because I got kind of excited about the idea of oh this could make it really clear. We could avoid the whole GUID thing. Anyway some really cool ideas. So I will go ahead and take that one. And if you want to know more about what I'm talking about, you can go back to last meeting where we actually dug in and knocked around about that thing a bit more, but I am more confident that it can be done. So there's that. Okay. Next one, eight, seven, one, three localized variables no longer support a dot in the ID. Hmm. Okay. Look dot log dot downgrade is on what? That's strange. Oh, a dot. Wait, but there's no. I'm so confused. There's no dot in that ID. Uh, there is in the source code. That's hi hidden. Oh, in this issue, I see. In the in the repro repo that we so love to see. Yes. All right. Okay. This is cool. I I was looking for a little more context right here, but that's okay. Um, oh, which file? I didn't look there. Package. Uh, my guess. But no error. Doesn't even say the file. Wait, what? Package. It's in package. It's yeah, in the I major know, Why does the error not have the... Okay, so weird. All right. Um, cut and paste. Cut and paste, yeah. Oh, maybe they pulled out of Visual Studio. All right, so downgrade dot error. All right, so that's the part they're missing from their message is that... Oh, or did we cut that error message down? Okay, yep, fine, cool. Um, yeah, and it looks like there's a pull request for it. Okay. Um, oh, Bevan did the work. All right, cool. Well, we'll just have to go... Look at that. Uh, yeah, we should probably take that in six. You can Agreed. go ahead and give it to me to go look at the pull request kind of thing. Okay. Um, all right. 8715. Remote launch fails on server 22, Windows 11 that have been uh, STIG'd. What is STIG'd? Um, STIG, a Windows ser Okay. Still don't know what STIG is. Security yeah, something? A it's a it's a DoD thing. Oh, of course it is. And 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 no, oh, it, this it is absolutely cannot be a verb. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Uh, it's, it's a. Fine. I reject that. Uh, it's a per. All right. So this is that per user. Yeah. Failing to load. Um, it, the the STIG is is basically a list of instructions, uh, a list of lockdown instructions. It it's you know, okay. it's pretty thorough. Like deleting, yeah. you know, the whole concept of a per user user. I don't know. I, I don't know exactly know the cause of that one, but it's just it's just a, a script, a yeah. manual, like human readable script you run to to do some hardcore lockdown. Got it. Sure. And burn is hiccuping because it's trying to get per user data, and they're not. It's not able to get that run run through GMSA. That's the the server Managed account. Service account, yeah. Yeah. G yeah. I forgot what G is it not global, is it? Anyway, whatever that. Um can't call it MSA because that's a Microsoft account. Anyway. 
these yeah. names that Microsoft has made a mess of all in the authentication authorization world. Bad, bad, bad. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's interesting. Um, and they're not loading the user profile probably here, which means they don't have a user update. Although I don't even know if managed accounts have a user profile. So my right. guess is not based on the error message. Remote execute via remote WMI. That's cute. To impersonate as a domain admin. Whew. <laughs> Here you go. Be everything orgy. Oh, as a domain admin even. Yeah, they're probably, they must not be loading the profile. And Bird's getting upset when you don't load the profile. Okay. Well, this is the, uh, I mean, this is a change in three, from three where you know, it's just assumed. Of course you can load, load profile. a user profile. Or uh, of course you can get a per user, you know, known directory. Um, and so uh, I see. compared to three, burn four and later, just say, uh, I couldn't do it and failed, even if you don't have any per user, per user packages. Yeah. So, um, and they the, said they did a pull request. I think I saw this pull request go by and it was like, just fall back to the per machine locations. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I suggested that was not the right approach because in any other scenario, you know, it's the unelevated engine that tries to cache per user packages, and that's going to immediately fail. Um, no, it's going to so, fail during caching. Sorry. Um, yes. Which is interesting. Well, uh, yeah, per immediately was the wrong word. Um, brutally, maybe is better. Because um, obviously, you know, the unelevated engine can't write to the to a per machine location. So I think oh, roughly gosh. the the a better fix I think is to you know oh I can't do it that's okay and then at some point hopefully early in the apply process determine that oh a per user package is, needs to be cached therefore fail I'd much rather have that than than you know access denied yeah access denied to well, yeah then you have to see that it's a use of the machine location yeah you have to find this message saying hey we fell back to per machine data yeah, yeah or right. worse yeah to crash because we didn't initialize what's expected to be you know a valid path yeah but that's this is in cache oh this is done like cache oh cache initialized so it's done cache initialized yep Yep, this is very early. And it must have been done on demand before. Um, yeah, I did not go back and verify what three did because that's ancient yeah. history. Yeah, that, there's a lot of changes between four and three in that space too. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's very strange behavior. Putting a string in and we'll have a hardcore string. So that's very strange. Uh yeah, yeah it's it's to <laughs> collapse duplicate to make sure the strings are duplicated. Single the strings can be single instance. But they're not. They are. <laughs> no. The 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 failed to fi to find local HS app data directory uh -huh. is used for both per machine and per user. So that string can be single instance. No. This has failed to find local per user application falling back to per machine app data. So anyway, it's a... the other one is per machine. That's the the HS string. Sure, it, it, but it's a hard coded value. It's just so it's strange. It's completely weird, and it was just to to let the compiler be slightly smaller. I'm all in favor of that. I guess. I don't... I, have, I guess I need more context on the code. Oh, uh, yeah. All right. Um, the other, my other concern about this issue is that, you know, I, I went and looked up the the particular set of of lockdown instructions that this particular version of the STIG is about, and there's like 900 of them, roughly. I. I they're not numbered that I could see, uh, but it's like 4,000 lines of, 
of text to describe each one at a couple of lines each. So my concern is that this is not the only thing we're going to run into. Well, in their case, they said it worked with Wix 3. So their set of these things, it's like, well, this is a one that's an issue. Well, that's, yeah, I, again, I'm okay. It worked in Wix 3. doesn't matter. Lots of changes in, Wix, in burn in Wix 4. Oh, I see. You're saying there might be another change in Wix 4 that breaks this after this. Exactly. Break. Oh, because this yeah. is very initialized, so it's very early. Right, right. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but they could verify that. Like, you know, they could say, hey, yeah, true. This sort of thing lets it through. All right. Uh, I don't know. I, this is not fun to deal with. So, no, definitely not. Um, I guess we could ask, see if this guy wants to take it and then continue to go round and round on the um, the right fix and we can work towards the right fix in the pull request since he's the one with the repro. See if he wants to do that. Um, yeah, and he, he's already sent one pull request. So uh, I'll I'll take the issue as Shepard and, and see if we can get through. Well, the... I don't know if you want to take the issue if you're not going to finish it. So uh, I have like, no problem unassigning myself later. Uh, yeah. Okay. Fair enough. That, just, that's fine. If you want just to, just to work on the, the pull request. Okay. Yeah. That's, uh, gee, and it's look more security stuff <laughs> or close to things. Well, that if you get yeah, wrong, you adjacent. can make security problems. If you do this wrong kind of thing, tired of right, these kind of right. issues. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. Fun. Yuck. All yeah. right. Um, add the ability to opt out of path validation custom actions Wix UI at build time. Eight seven one eight. Yeah, so I got rid of sp speaking of pull requests. Um, I sent a pull request that got rid of the custom action to print the EULA, and that leaves oh yes the path validation custom action yeah. as the only custom action that's yet used in. Wix UI. Now, I always hated this yeah. custom action. Um, it was added after, oh, it was added when I was still at Microsoft, but had moved to Boston to work on AppV, and it happened while I was gone. And, and you know, so 15 years later, can, can we get rid of it? Or... Be, uh, you know, have the ability to not have to include it because that would also simplify with you know the the architecture specific custom actions. Yeah, it would. So why do we need uh, is or the check target? What does it do that check target path doesn't do? Yeah, as I recall, I remember uh, check target path, the, the custom action does more checking, okay. deeper checking. I don't it, 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 like I mentioned fifteen years. Um, so I, I don't recall the exact details, but you know, check target path might be just fine for most people. We might even um, get opt in in six. Um, I'm actually okay with that. I mean, it, you know, it's a breaking change, yada yada. But in general, if if we think that check target path is what is fine for most people, and definitely getting rid of custom actions is a good thing. Yeah. Then make it opt in where most people aren't getting it anymore, and those people that want the extended validation can get it. So it's like, well, yeah, I know it's still there. You just have to opt in to have it. That might be the way to. I mean, if we really want to get rid of it, I think that'd be more useful. Otherwise, people are never going to set this, and they're always going to get this custom action, and it's just going to keep being a thing. Yeah, that's fair. I'm I'm perfectly oh, fine. It's worth considering not including by default. Yeah, I agree with this right here. So, um, anyway, so that's an idea. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll take it. Okay. Are you interested enough in it? Yeah. I, it, uh, it would be great to ship packages that don't have any custom actions in them. Yeah, for in sure. A lot of cases. Yeah. So the print YOLO is a great one to get rid of. So, yeah. All right. 8720. Prerequisite not package not installed before running custom BA. 
with Sarah but hey come on I feel like we're missing some oh they they did not a uh, single tick is not enough to get your fence blocks let me can I fix this here I cannot right now um can I can I view are you logged in I'm logged in as, but as the as the bot so that anything I do doesn't end up being oh me. um so my bet is, and the code that I can't see here, um, yeah, this is the first and secondary thing. We were just talking about this issue. This is the prerequisite. Luke Stanby never has that. He's trying to use a custom BA. Yeah, I don't, yeah, this, I think this is a question. <laughs> like, well, and my confusion oh, is, okay. I yeah, I fixed it. Um, the only, the only code that was posted uses Wix standard BA, which of course does not have yeah. prerequisites, and and therefore yeah, yeah no, this 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 is nonsense. BA. Yeah, okay, never mind. Like, I was expecting there's more to the code that was hiding, but there's not, and this doesn't make any. No, okay, they need to. Let's just close that. It's not a. They need to go try again. They should start with a question. If they actually have a problem, then we can talk about it. But wasn't there some issue about documenting? The... There, there is the whole first and secondary thing, but I think if you include the prerequisite thing, then it solves that because it's marked as primary, so yours ends up being secondary. Anyway, I think if you do the right things, it it works. But uh, it, are the right things documented? I think I, <sighs> pulling stuff out from the beginning of the year. Um, I think if you continue to use the prereq, it does the right thing, and you don't have to know about first and secondary, um, primary and secondary bootstrap applications at all, um, because that guy doesn't have. And that's what Bevan said. Hey, you're missing the prereq thing that does all this stuff. So I, I think it just works, and they can bring up an issue and say, hey, this isn't working. Um, but what they wrote doesn't make any sense. So um, based off what they're asking. Yeah. So I'll I'll rephrase it. Is is the prerequisite element documented yes. as being needed yes well is it, i as much as it is uh for managed custom actions it's it was there in four as well that's my, my it hasn't changed from four to five the prerequisite right element if you want to that... install the .NET core things like that yes i think to get that right all right, you want to give it, I don't want, this issue is not good enough. I, I will go and double check the documentation. I need to do okay, that. I, that I thought issue. you had indicated that some, there was missing documentation. The missing documentation is that primary and secondary is not documented today. Oh, I see. That's but what's you're saying missing. that the Wix prerequisite bootstrapper application element already exists and you right. should have been using it already. Right. Okay. Right. And it sets itself as primary, which causes yours to be secondary, and it ends up causing yeah. everything to work with no code changes, is what my memory does. I was like, hey, look, I made it all work without breaking okay, anybody okay. from four to five, and woohoo, at least that was my rough memory, which I will go sort out when I go look at primary and secondary bootstrap applications. Okay, so close this issue. Yeah, this issue doesn't make any sense. Based on, uh, simply on what you said, with standard bootstrap application is not a custom. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, no, I know. I, I, yes. I was tempted to close this because of that. But... Yes. I think that is the okay. correct thing to do for that issue. Okay. 8734, cannot find file error in Wix lib project. Uh, this is two Wix libs, two yes. binary Wix libs, one of which refers to files in the other. Yeah. That doesn't work. Yeah, I could see this is this is sensitive, very sensitive type things, and I could see it not quite working from uh from not working quite the same from three to to four and thus five. Um so yeah, probably a bug in there. So yeah, I think we should open it open for grabs. Someone could fix it. Yep. Um it's yeah, I I feel like I hit part of this in the deployment dojo somewhere yeah, only in that not that it didn't work from three to four because of course deployment dojo was all written in four code but in that it the pathing for wix libs 
was working a little differently than my memory, but then I usually don't trust my memory um, as much. So maybe my memory is correct at that time. I just remember it kind of being a blip that I went, oh, this isn't quite right. But then I think I convinced myself that it was right. So then anyway, I'd have to go back and kind of relive the whole Wixlib space to go remember what I was thinking there. And yeah, if you have specifics, they can go uh, dig into it. All right. Um, eight seven three nine. Wix five bootstrapper upgrading installer leaves two ARP entries when log element specified. Really? What does the log do? Is it causing it to fail during uninstall? Well, the problem is the 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 authoring that causes this issue apparently is. Oh wait, log disabled. Oh sorry. The 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 original. Authoring was log disable equals yes. <laughs> so so that's get rid of the <laughs> thing that would let you diagnose the problem. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, cool. Cool. Um, yeah, someone could go dig into that. That sounds goofy. I don't try to recommend turning off logging, but I guess. Yeah, cool. Someone could dig into that if they want. That's funny. <laughs> that's crazy. All right. Um, it seems strange. It's going to be some, probably something really simple once you find it. Like, oh yeah, that doesn't work. Okay. 8740, files element ignore, or ignores. Uh, first letter of root folder names when pointed to a subst folder. Oh, wow. Subst folders, Matt. How does that matter? It doesn't. Oh, is it just the root um, drive? Like if you it's put the it, root. It's the root yeah. drive. It's Anything the drive that's the root. Yeah, it's not, it doesn't have anything to do with subs. It has to do with, if, if you for some reason want to grab the entire contents of an Type directory, plug in a USB drive and grab everything off of it. There's a hiccup there. Okay, I can see that. Oh, yeah, I didn't mean to click on that. Okay, cool. <laughs> Are you taking that? All right. Yeah, I, I'm taking. I know that. you have a uh, an uh, an affection for files and making it work. So all good. Well, Eight yeah. seven four one. What was the package scope default? What is the package scope default? Uh, probably per machine. It is per machine. And, and it wasn't documented? It's okay. Not documented. Yeah, okay. Um, so. Bevan submitted a pull request that pulled out. Uh, yeah, this is very interesting. So the XSDs let you specify a. Um, Default. Yeah, this is terrible. There, this is a, a really bad user experience when you use it inside Visual Studio, so we don't use them. Yep. Yep. I don't. Really? It's yeah. bad? Yeah, it it it, it auto completes them and puts them in for you or something with the defaults. It's it you, you don't oh, need to use default. Oh it re oh. Yeah, oh, that's the, horrible. The behavior is really bad when you set default equals, so we just don't do it. Um, well, we have done it. There are other elements that have Well, we we've been getting rid of them. We they're not in anything common. Oh, okay. Um, for sure. Okay. So I just remember this being like not ideal behavior because we were using them all over and then it had this really goofy behavior and it was like, oh, well, I guess we're not doing that anymore. So then we ended up document. So we, we, we think of the word default as meaning here's what happens if you don't specify it. Visual Studio goes, oh, this is what you should plug in. Yeah, I guess. It, I, it's been a long time since I looked at it. It's just more and more the, you know, this is the Visual Studio behavior and all that. Anyway, heat wave features abound in this whole space that uh, we've talked about. Um, and doing better so so yeah default has undesirable behaviors interesting okay or and maybe it's also in if you're processing the xsd oh and it also shows up in the yeah it it also i the um xml readers also add them if you don't specify them that that too uh, maybe oh. that's actually the bigger problem is that's if you a, yeah, default it ends up inside that's what it is I think there's a funky behavior inside Visual Studio's XML editor. That may have changed though, but like that would have been really old Visual Studio last time I remember trying this because we stopped right. doing this because it definitely put it into the XML document, which causes the defaults to end up inside your code. And yeah. sometimes we do things where we're like, well, if you don't specify the default, then we can do what we want. Where if we have a default in here, then it's always set and the user doesn't even know and we can't do our basically, was it, did the user specify something? Or did, if the user didn't specify yeah, yeah. something, we can do something with that information. And that right. is, that's why that happens too. Anyway, they're bad. <laughs> they're bad and we can't use them. 
a bit of a bummer. Yeah. But okay, that's fine. So so the bulk of the doc calls out defaults. Well, sorry, when the doc specifies a default, it does so in in prose. Correct. And that's the approach we need to take. That's the approach we have to take. Yeah. Okay. Yep. It's annoying. It is. Yeah. Although I don't know how much it matters as much since we're not using the XSDs as much during runtime, but I still think they can get used at pre-processor time. I'd have to go dig into it. Anyway, it just, it all stacks. Yeah. <sighs> Problems with XSD. More reasons why I don't want to move away from using the XSD for a lot yeah. of stuff. But anyway, 8746, Wix standard BA ball condition, not localizable anymore? Oh, that's odd. Oh, pound. That's at Wix standard BA. Oh. Oh, yeah. Ball conditions parse from XML is called before localizations. Ah, sorry. Um, so it ends up pulling that out. Yeah, that sounds like probably could be a problem. Cool. Maybe they want to send a fix for that. But yeah, that's goofy. Cool. Go up for grabs. I could take it if they want. Cool. All right. Yeah, it was triage. That wasn't too bad. Usually I have all my other ones here and I don't I don't forget to control click by way out, but um whatever. All right. Cool. Um that's that. Other things people want to talk about, stuff going on out there. Um as I mentioned, we've just been a little busy, so we're kind of getting I know there's a full pull request of these out there that we're a little behind on, but uh, that's just the the state of life right now. But we'll pick it up again in you know. Definitely November will be, should open up and be much easier. Um, maybe not the beginning of November, but by the time we get into November a little bit, things will calm down and the holidays will hopefully settle in and customers will go to sleep for a little while. I think that's kind of the way it works for us, <laughs> at least for a little bit. Um, so yeah, I'm filling time, see if anybody has any questions, things they want to talk about. Uh, our next meeting, if I did my math correctly, is October 15th. I always should have Bob double check this slide before I get here. Um, one, two, three, right? Third week. Yeah, third Tuesday that's weird. Of the world. Yep. What, weird as in that it's October? No, uh, a little that it's bit. 15th? Weird uh, that it's the third Tuesday is the 15th. But yeah. that's just because the first is, is Tuesday. Yes. Is and the first get, Tuesday. And we also get five Tuesdays next month. Um, yeah. All right. We're just killing time seeing if anybody has anything else they want to talk about, stuff they want to uh, introduce otherwise um i think we're pretty good we'll be back in october and we will do more triage things see if anything else exciting hits us in between those times um but right now we're just kind of um cruising along and we'll probably see a flurry of wix 6 activity from at least from me i mean, probably from bob too um towards the end of the year which is you know just kind of the way it works right now um and that's probably all i got right now Anything else, Bob? No. Nope. Nothing for me. All right. Cool. Well, that's where we're at. Uh, we'll be back in four weeks for October 15th, and uh, we'll do all this again. Till then, you guys take it easy. Bye. Bye.